It's now 7.30 and it's time for uh, our meeting of the Emmitsburg Planning Commission to come to order. Uh, let us begin with standing and have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks everybody for being here this evening or putting up with our crazy weather that we're having. Uh, just for an opening, just like to to say that we're in the midst of the season and to just wish everybody a happy holidays during, during this time of the year. And also um, it's hard to believe that in two weeks we're gonna be in a brand new year, so. An early happy new year and wish everybody a very safe and prosperous 2020. Next item are the disposition of the minutes. Everybody has seen a copy of those minutes from our meeting that we had on the 25th of November. Are there any additions, corrections, changes anybody wishes to make to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. Motion has been made by Mark to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Joyce. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are approved. Okay, next item. We go to number five. We go to the old minutes. Uh, this will be with the regarding the rudder store number 84. As you recall, um, at our last meeting, we did table this item uh, before we had reached conclusion of our debate. And so, uh, Zach, did, would you like to kind of bring us more up to date and what what things have happened since that meeting? Sure. So I'll try to keep this brief because Mark said he wants to go home and watch some Christmas Hallmark movies. So <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I'll try to keep this brief. So we did our homework. We spoke with our solicitor. Um, we spoke with Rudders. We spoke with SHA. Um, and we'll kind of go over the comments here as we go along and kind of explain what we spoke about and in the conclusions that we made. So on your new staff memo, um, compared to your old staff memo, we erased number 14, which is the clearly delineated pedestrian crosswalks, um, shall be added to the two stub streets. So what SHA has told us is that they are going to require rudders to install the sidewalks at the, at the time of, um, as they build rudders. So this is SHA's um, parcel as it sits here. It's kind of a, a weird shaped lot. Um, I spoke with Scott Newell, the district office, and he said as a condition of approval of the highway occupancy, occupancy approval permit, they're going to require this. Um, that, I spoke with our solicitor. The town cannot legally require rudders to install the sidewalks on this parcel because it's not rudders parcel. So fortunately for the town and unfortunately for rudders, they're still going to have to build the sidewalks from my understanding with SHA. Um, they could change their mind from now to then, but that doesn't have anything to do with the town. We, we have no say in that matter. Um, regarding the sidewalks shown in orange. So I'm sorry. Uh, regarding the sidewalks shown in orange, um, our new condition number 14 in the staff memo page four is the applicant shall immediately inst install curbs, gutters, and sidewalks at the location as shown in orange on the attached map, which is this is the exact map is in your staff memo. And this is in accordance with 161630Q. So what that states is they're required in front of all non-residential lots. Since this is an odd shaped lot, it has kind of like a T, we are requiring it up to this point 
of their property. Um, also, and in accordance with 178140G, this means sidewalks uh, must provide a safe access to and from the parking areas. Since there are tractor trailer parking areas here, they are required to have sidewalks. So you'll see we're requiring sidewalks all along here. Um, other than that, on the next page, oh, my mic's acting weird, I apologize. Also, I added number 33. There we go. I also added comment number 33. The applicant must obtain approval from the Maryland State Highway Administration and furnish a copy a t uh, to the town, a copy of approval. So that's really the only the changes that we've made. To sum it up, um, we can't do deferrals. We do not have the legal authority to do deferrals. And also another answer that I got, the mayor cannot veto the plan. Um, it states in the ordinance that he has the authority to sign all plans. However, he cannot veto a plan. So that was a nice clarification mm. I got. That's interesting. It's a, they said it was a weird caveat to our, our ordinance <laughs> that they make him sign the plans even if he doesn't agree with it. Mm. Yeah, but it's interesting. Thought I'd put that out there. <laughs> he can approve it, but he can't turn it down. Exactly. So are there any questions related to the updated staff memo? Maybe um, Tim may want to chime in somewhere. Yes. Yes. Come, please come out to the mic and. Um, you know, obviously we, we had a discussion on sidewalk. We will probably hope to have a similar audience with SHA regarding the sidewalks. Um, don't know where we'll, we'll end up, but you know, our, our feelings are, are the same. Why put something there? Now, if, again, if, if SHA comes back and says, yep, we're, you know, we're ready to roll, that's a different story, but I haven't gotten that. So we'll, we'll, have, we'll have that. I just want to be transparent. We will have that conversation with SHA. Any questions? Just one more thing I forgot to mention. They will be required to add gutters and curbs at the minimum. Even though it's on that separate lot, all street, new streets, private or public, are required to have gutters and curbs. So that's one protection for the town for that. So you're saying that um, we have the authority to require curbs and gutters on the street that's on um, their property? Well, we don't have the authority to do it, but it's a requirement for them to put the, the road in. If that makes any kind of sense at all. <laughs> and, and well, where's that requirement? Excuse me. Where's that requirement stated? Sure, it's in. I was just looking at this before. And Tim was gonna. They were going to do curbs and gutters already. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tim. Yeah, I, I don't believe that's 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 a change. Sixteen twenty point twenty. Okay. So. So it, it, they can't put that road in without curbs and gutters. So it's not explicitly stated in the conditions here, but it's an ordinance. It's in the ordinance, yeah. so they have to follow it. Okay. Where are, is Emmitsburg specifically requiring the roads to be constructed? We are not. We are not. Rudders cannot obtain an occupancy permit without this street because no. the, the site distance is not correct here to have a two in and out. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, from, from our perspective, it's of, it's of value for us to, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be of better value if SHA was to construct it and we were to, or, or share costs on it. But from, from, our, from a business standpoint, you always want to be able to get people into your front door. And, um, and having the, the two, two entrances, um, the, the one along 140 and then the one coming off the park and ride. Um, that makes sense to get us in the front door. Um, we do have uh, a significant portion of, of truck traffic. And for the most part, what we try to do is separate that wherever we can. And so that's really kind of what brings the, the, the lower um, driveway in so that we, we can separate that, that traffic stream, so. Okay, all right. Any other questions for Tim? Okay.
Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Um, we have Eric. Do you wish to make a statement? No, I'm You're just here with Tim. In the I can't drive. Okay. I can't drive. Can't Eric, drive. Uh, so Eric started this week, <laughs> so we're kind of tag teaming things right now. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Okay. We shall now continue the debate. Questions, comments, and to get to a motion. I move the motion. The what is it? Amended motion. Conditionally approved. Conditionally with, approved. Yeah. With Thirty-five conditions. Bernard, are you uh, including all of the conditions that are being suggested by the staff? All thirty-five. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. I need to tell us uh, which conditions you are including with the uh, the motion. I have to number them. Well, they're, they're already, already in there. You just have to reference all the motions yeah. that are in the memo. Okay. That's just we just want to make sure that, that you you really want to include all those 35, or do are you suggesting or something different? No, I want to include all of them. The suggested motion, Bernard, is on page two. Yes. Yes, I want to include all, all of them. Okay, I second. so a uh, motion has been made by Bernard to approve with the to approve this application for final site uh, with the 35 conditions or, and on the, that have been suggested to us from staff. <clears throat> that motion has been seconded by Mark. Any last questions or comments from anyone? <clears throat> I do, Mr. Chair. Yes. I know I, I do apologize. I want to. I don't want to drag out the meeting any longer than it than it needs to. But just for my clarification, I was not a member of the planning commission prior to. I have a question specific regarding the um, the pumping station. So Rudders is is paying for the installation of a pumping station that will that is a necessity for the Rudders building. Um, some retail areas and then potentially 500 homes that will be ac across across the way. Are they existing homes or a potential uh, development of 500 single-family homes? Good. So as, as part of our agreement of sale, we have an obligation to the seller to provide a pump station that can handle that future flow. Okay. Um, as far as we know at this point, when, when that pump station goes in, it'll just be our sewage flow. And anything that then eventually will have to be approved through site plans and the like before it would then discharge in there. But because it's not just our flow, I mean, nor normally what we would do in a situation like this, if it was just our flow, it would be a it would be a small grinder pump. Um, it would be probably a, you know a, a fifteen twenty thousand dollar pump. This is going to be about a quarter of a million dollar because it's going to basically be a municipal. Mm -hmm. so that it can be turned over to the town and it'll be a town facility it, and and it's not necessarily allocating flows it's going to be approved for it but then to be able to discharge into that you'll have to go through the process to be approved to to use that and then we're doing that separately with the board board of commissioners that's correct okay. um, our attorney's working right now on that agreement and then we'll be going back and forth with rudders um and then we'll bring it back a final uh, agreement to the board of commissioners at a later date okay to be determined and that was you said that was part of your condition of sale it was part of our agreement of sale that we had to provide water and sewer to up to that parcel where it goes from there that'll be this the current um owner or whoever they you know ends up developing that if it ever gets developed so no pumping station means no rudders no pumping station means no rudders. Yeah, uh, it, we would basically be in default of our agreement sale. Okay, thank you. I'm satisfied. Okay. Thanks. Any other comments or questions? No, my answer. You answered my question. I understand it now. Okay. You had the same question. You're all set then, Joyce? You're, you're all set, Joyce? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mark, any, any last thoughts? I'm okay good. now. Okay, Bernard, any last I'm thoughts? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the motion has been 
made and it has been seconded to approve this application with the condition of the 35 items that we have been given and suggested from the staff. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Concludes the uh, Ruther's application. Yes, I'll give that to you. Uh, I'll email it to you tomorrow. Right, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hopefully, I'll be walking on two legs next time we see each other. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good. Okay. On to the next item, number six of our agenda. We're getting into some new business. <clears throat> we got two items. First one being uh, <clears throat> a proposal for us to consider for recommendation to the board ordinance dealing with ordinance number 1907 doing the forest conservation. Zach, what's this all about? Sure, so the town's forest conservation program, um, this is currently chapter 1648, was cre originally created in 1993. Um, small amendments to this chapter were approved in 2002 and 2014. Uh, periodically, the General Assembly of Maryland with guidance from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, uh, Forest Service amends the state's forest conservation act um, the town is required to update the town's forest conservation chapter each time the General Assembly amends the act. If passed, the proposed amendment would bring the town into compliance uh, with the current version of the act. So basically, it hasn't been updated since 2014. Things have changed. Um, so we also, I will also, you'll see in front of you, um, we just got a letter today from Maryland DNR. They reviewed the proposed changes to the ordinance. They have to do that every single time. I sent this about three months ago to them, so I thought it was all good to go. And today, literally today, uh, around 12 o'clock, I got the updates. So we'll go over those updates. I'm not gonna go over every single update that's I sent to you um, a couple weeks ago. You guys have some time to review that. They're just simple uh, changes. Basically, they send us this book every single year, and then it's a model ordinance in here, and we just copy and paste the language. and bring in our own zoning and everything else so as you see the letter dated december 12th um, i went through the ordinance today and made all of these adjustments if you would like to we can go over this because i'm sure you haven't had a chance to read this yet so there's 16 adjustments so i'll go over these briefly so the first one they are asking what us to explain why the applicability threshold for each of the following definitions development projects, project plan, and related, regulated activity have been lowered to 20,000. So this is an interesting one. So this was existing when I first started working here, and it's been here since, I, you know, since I've been here. So we had it at 20,000 square feet. So any project that, so for example, if you're gonna bulldoze your property and it's over 20,000 square feet, you have to do a forest conservation plan. For whatever reason, our number is 20,000. I cannot give you that answer. Um, the, the rule, the law, um, the state's uh, Forest Conservation Act has that threshold at 40,000. So we do not have the authority to have 20,000. So interesting. Didn't know that until recently. So we changed that everywhere out, everywhere through the ordinance. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. So you, I'm not arguing with their template or whatever but you you say we don't have the authority to make it different from the state we cannot make it more strict you can't make it more strict mm -hmm. okay hmm. that's interesting okay thank you sure uh, we have to argue nothing <laughs> okay so number two um forest conservation plan definition should reflect the reference to that section in the town's ordinance so as you can see below i added town code chapter 1648 that was an easy one. Three definitions are missing for Forest Mitigation Bank Agreement and Forest Mit Mitigation, Mitigation Bank Plan. I added those definitions as you can see below there. Four, the definition for plan unit development is missing the corresponding zoning classification. So this one's interesting. I, I did a little research today. I did not know we had a O and S um, zoning district before so that was changed in 2016 it was changed from ons open space to institutional so i just made that adjustment here 
Number five, the definition of track needs to include that specific sentence there. So this, then my response is the sentence was added, or the sentence was already in the definition, so no changes are required. They, um, I guess they made a mistake there. Number six, the applicability threshold. Again, that's that 40,000 that has been corrected. Seven, and another, again, 20,000. Can you explain the exemption threshold for agriculture activities that was changed from 20,000? I changed it to 40. Eight, the legal reference 164830F and 164830B7 appears to be incorrect. You may mean 164830B6. I added that. That was a mistake. Number nine in section B, in this section B needs to be revised to remove 14 and add 13. I did that. That was an easy one. 10, that, uh, again, that's the 20,000 and 40,000. I changed that. 11 was a simple spell, spelling error. 12 um, says, can you explain how the afforestation thresholds percentage were determined? I corrected them to match the exact state thresholds. And that just shows how I changed them. Next is 13. It says, I suggest that in F1, coastal bays be removed. Obviously, Emmitsburg doesn't have coastal bays, so I removed that. Missing language on establishing receiving credits from a forest mitigation bank. Um, I, I specifically left that out because I didn't want the town to have the responsibility to run a forest mitigation bank, but the state says we have to have it and offer it because Frederick County all, all, already offers a forest mit mitigation bank. So if the town or if the uh, developer doesn't want to put trees in our town and they don't want to pay us the fee in lieu of, they have the option to buy forest mitigation bank credits from Frederick County, then they would use that money to spread it out through um, Frederick County. From my understanding, that's a lot higher than our fee in lieu of, so they're going to want to buy it from us every single time. Um, 14, it says uh, missing language on establishing and receiving credits. All right, I just did that one. Yeah, I did that. see 15 add to the subsection the language of Comar 08193 I added that information basically it states the local program shall pr provide to the department notice of enforcement excuse, excuse me Zach I, I don't have 14 or 15 I'd stop at 13 okay I think no, no, no. are you on the back page back page back side oh got it oh, okay good I'm going a little fast I apologize um, oh, so we basically what that means is we have to provide notice to the Department of Natural Resources every time we issue a enforcement notice. So, for example, if Rudders doesn't do what they say they're supposed to do on their forest conservation plan, we would issue an enforcement notice stating you have this many days to follow through and we have to send that to DNR. Um, and last, add the required annual report information on forest mitigation banks. And as you can see, 567 was added to um, our ordinance. So that's the, everything that's been new. And I apologize. I didn't get that to that to you any sooner. I just received it today. So, um, other than that, that's all I have. It's pretty straightforward. Just a lot of it. A lot of it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Anyone have a question or a comment? So this is pretty straightforward. We basically have to yeah. follow the state's ordinances um, mm. and copy and paste and put it in ours, essentially. Um, I didn't have any other questions. I, I did pick up on a couple of the spelling things that they picked up on, and plus the, the coastal bays. I, I didn't yeah. think that Emmitsburg has any coastline. But, but, uh, not, not yet. Anyway. Not yet. If, if we do, we're going to have some other issues yeah. to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, there was one other thing that I don't think the state picked up on. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Page nine of the document you sent two weeks ago. At the bot near the bottom under under timber harvesting. Number one, the last sentence 
Yes, sir. It's yes. also repeated in number two. Timber harvesting does not include grubbing and clearing of root mass. Is there a reason to repeat that sentence? Oh, I see what you're saying. Just let me check this, um, the book that they gave us just to make sure they didn't repeat it. Yeah, I thought there might be some legal reason, but I wasn't getting it. That's a good catch. That actually should be under number one. Timber harvesting does not include grubbing and clearing. That should be crossed out. Okay. Number two should still be there, so it'll just have one sentence there. Good catch. Yeah, good. So other than that, I didn't have any other comments about it. Looks good. <clears throat> Yeah. Although it, it is a little baffling to me why we can't, not that I was suggesting we do that, but why we can't make it more strict than the state. That surprises me. Anyone else have a question or comment? Okay, again, remember, we would be only providing a recommendation. We do, we do not have the authority to approve. Could somebody here to make a motion that we recommend to the Board of Commissioners that they approve this? I make a motion to recommend approval of proposed ordinance 19-07 without comment. I'll second. Okay. A motion has been made like to that. recommend approval to the Board of Commissioners. That motion has been seconded by Joyce. Any last questions or comments before we vote okay all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. opposed and Joe has I abstained. shall abstain. motion carries Okay. Then the last or the next item will be another opportunity for us to provide a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners on Ordinance 1908 regarding commercial district buffers. Zach? Sure. This is a really quick one and easy one. So, Town Codes uh, Section 172090 was approved in 2015 in order to limit potential noise and light pollution from businesses in the commercial zoning districts. So this includes both the neighborhood commercial B1 and the general commercial B2 onto neighboring residential properties. Um, if this amendment is passed, the proposed amendment would allow the planning commission to waive the commercial district buffer requirements during the site plan process. If the planning commission determines that the proposed use of the commercial property would not cause detriment to the neighboring residential properties. This exemption would only apply to the B1 zone, which is only a few properties near um, Emmett Gardens and also in front of Brookfield. So the commercial district buffer, just so everyone knows at home, um, is it says where a commercial zone is adjacent to a residential zone, a buffer zone will be provided by the commercial property owner as follows. So this is just like the Dunkin' Donuts situation here. Um, a six foot tall solid fence will be installed and maintained along the property boundary abutting the residential zoning district. And B, landscaping will be installed and maintained to screen parking areas so as not to be visible from roads within the adjacent residential zoning district. And then the amendment would add C, the Planning Commission may waive the requirements of this section during the site plan process only for properties in the neighborhood uh, commercial zoning district if it's determined that the proposed use of the commercial property would not cause detriment to the neighboring residential property owners. So there are not many, I guess you could say, um, high polluting uses that could go into the B1 district. So this all kind of arose from the Baldacino property. It came before this board a while ago last year when it was being, the map was being changed from uh, residential to B1. Um, they did sell the property to a insurance firm 
um, it's the opinion of some neighbors and um, others that that the new use of an insurance firm would be a low use, um, you know, won't cause a lot of light pollution or noise pollution. So that a buffer may not be necessary, but that's for the, if this is passed, that would be for the planning commission to decide if that fence is actually necessary. So it basically gives you more power. <laughs> more, <clears throat> more power. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Questions, comments from anyone about this proposal? Anyone? Yes, sir. And, uh, yeah. Mark? So uh, is it the intention that the, the neighbors in the vicinity of any time, you know, an applicant would come before the Planning Commission and, and request the waiver, would the residents in the area be informed of that directly and not just have to read it in the paper or something? They, they would know that waiver is being requested? They would not. It would just have to be um, how we usually do our process. So Facebook, website. Oh, really? Yeah. Because <clears throat> I'm thinking, and I, I don't know the exact situations, but you, you'll see on some properties, like when there's zoning appeals and that sort of thing, you know, in different parts of the county, there will actually be signs state yes. on the property to mm -hmm. alert the immediate neighbors. Yep. We are required to do that. But, but we aren't going to do that in this case. We're not recommending that. Um, it gives you the authority to determine if that use will be high hazard. They'll have a light plan, so you'll be able to see how much light's being emitted from the proposed use, um, just like the Dunkin' Donuts had. Okay. Um, well, I'm not seeing that a, a six-foot-high fence has much to do with the light. I'm, that's because light posts are usually higher than six foot. Right. So, so I'm seeing the fence as just a, a kind of a border between the property and the residential area well just to yeah offer the buffer so the six foot fence regarding that it does cover light it covers lights in the cars oh okay so in going cars. down into your parking areas there's going to be a six foot fence True. so i would be of the opinion that if we're to determine that it's not a detriment i i would definitely want to hear from the immediate neighbors before i grant a waiver request um uh, I'm thinking the neighbors are going to know about it, but uh, um, yeah, I, but, I have to agree with uh, Mark. I, I, I'm concerned about that that part of it when it says that it's going to be up to us to determine whether there's any detriment to the community, and you know how would we gather the information so we would be able to say yes or no it's going to cause a detriment and i think as, as mark is indicating if you don't get those neighbors involved in the process i really don't know how we're going to find out yeah so i was you know kind of wanting earlier when i first read this over is um the the whole process this this does not change you know any of the processes any of the processes that require a public hearing none of that is there would not be a public hearing normally no like this and this doesn't change that this doesn't in any way um, <clears throat> without public input i would really be reluctant to try to guess if it's if uh, that business is going to be a detrimental or not and that, that's just my concern. <clears throat> I guess it, nice to have that flexibility and nice to have that authority, but I, I really wonder, do we, do we have the tools available for us to make that determination? That's what I think we're coming down to. I think you absolutely have the tools because requir re requirement of the site plan is a, a landscaping plan. Okay. It's going to be what use is it? So is it going to be your gas station, which can go into the b1 district of you know a drive-through or is it going to be a doctor's office that's only there from 7 to 4 p.m so i think you can make your best guess that's how we why we wrote that as we did because we believe that the residents are going to know when something's coming b beside their house they're, they're just going to know it's a small town um and like there's only a limited amount of uses that can go in the b1 which we can go over so mm -hmm. i mean it's totally different that's why we didn't want to do it in the b2 because there's so many different uses yeah. that are high 
intensity right. uses mm-hmm. in the B2. So we believe that is appropriate. But there are instances where a doctor's office, a dentist's office, something that's going to be open from, um, you know, eight to four. Just for an example, next door, creosote effects. In 2015, this was passed to make them put in a fence. They are very low impact, extremely low. So you have a fence out there now that serves no purpose Mm -hmm. because they were required to put it in and they are open till three, four o'clock in the day. And the neighbors have never complained since I've been working here anyway. So it may add an additional expense to the business. Just playing devil's advocate here. Mr. Chair. I was just going to ask um, Zach a question. I don't know if he has one readily available. Do you, do you have the handy dandy uh, zoning map to um, put up there? I have my Amy, do you have copy the, here, but did I just, put that on just my to slide? show the B one? Oh, there okay. it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's going to be hard to see. So here is the Bottachino property, which I call it, right in front of um, Jubilee here. Also, this is Creosote Effects, literally next door. So there's only about three or four properties that are in the B1 there. Also, going west of town, there's only, I think this is two or three parcels here. And as you can see, it's not near any of the homes. Um, This is where the cemetery is. So, and as it sits, they would be required to put a fence in here because it still is abutting a, a residential district. So, you know, would it be necessary if a dentist office went in there to put a fence beside a cemetery? I don't know. That's for you to decide. I understand that, you know, it it would make sense to... It's going to be an added expense to the town if we have to post the property every single time. Um, for every single site plan, you know. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I make a couple more comments? Yeah, certainly. So, so I understand what you're saying, Zach, and, and this doesn't really affect many properties at all, and I can't see that the town is going to have much more in the way of B1 zoning unless things really change a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it just... And... and this one property that that is that kind of uh, I'm lost the words that kind of got this going that the property the I forget the name of it uh, the, um, Maryland Insurance Brokers yeah I, you, you you were saying another name but anyway um, oh Baldacinos I'm sorry Baldacinos yep. that's what I can remember um, you know that kind of got this going and we may not ha- have another situation like that for a long long time but but to put something in here where the planning commission may waive a requirement and it's supposed to be protecting the neighborhood i just have a concern that we aren't really reaching out at least to the immediate people adjacent to that property and making sure they're aware of what is coming before them um i mean i i think we have pretty good judgment all of us and we can say yeah we this will be okay but i'd still like to hear from the property owners next door if we're going to waive a requirement that's in the ordinance and and if the if the requirement isn't a big deal then maybe the requirement shouldn't be there in the first place um for the fence you know if if it's something we could just waive then maybe it shouldn't even be there (laughs) if i may jump in just that i know you weren't there but at the um goodness was it the november meeting the the property owners immediately behind that property did come to that meeting yeah and i know in this situation they are very much aware and i get that but you know we're putting in an ordinance for future situations um and i'm i'm just of the philosophy that it's best to have the the neighborhood on board with things when you're changing something like a, a, a zoning appeal change or a zoning change or anything like that or waiving requirements i just I'm just at the frame of mind that the neighborhood should know about it. Are we, if we, tonight, if we approve it, then does it go, it goes to the board then with a public hearing, correct? That's correct. And that was advertised um, twice in the Frederick News Post. So 
I know everybody doesn't read the paper. Yeah. But no, I... it's out there. So this change is, is being made public, and we have to have a public hearing. And But it's up to the board to recommend. I'm not going to be labored if the rest of the commission is okay. No, and I understand what Mark's saying, too. I mean, you yeah. know, this particular property has been in discussion for almost two years now. I guess. Yeah, I, I understand this particular property has been, but we don't create ordinances just for single properties. It's, it applies across the town and, and in future years. So, um, that, that's what we have to keep in mind. And that's why we didn't want to waive this. We, I mean, we didn't want to eliminate this completely. We think it's right. definitely necessary. Yeah, and I do too. Yeah. But any other comments or questions? Can we, the chair is open for a motion to be made. We see on our agenda, there are four possibilities for a motion. If you'd like to look at those four and care to make a motion. Just for clarification, if there happens to be a tie Joe can vote, just so the board knows. We spoke with the attorney regarding that. That would be a yeah. unique situation, but. In a little review that I did on uh, good old Robert's Rules of Order, when you have a tie vote, that means the motion fails. Hmm. <clears throat> So that's <laughs> that's what it says. Hmm, okay. I'm just going by what Leslie yeah. said. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But maybe she doesn't know we use Robert's rule of order. So. And yeah, could be. And I know that's uh, as I understand it that it does say so in the uh, in the ordinance some in the section about uh, the planning commissions operation regarding the li liaison no well <clears throat> that's in there about having full value or full full uh, power to Voting vote power, yeah but i think it also says that it, it, it'll follow the robert rules of order correct in its in its meetings <clears throat> we have really old ordinances <laughs> that contradict <laughs> themselves we're working on cleaning them up <clears throat> Anyone care to make a motion? So, so I'm not hearing that I'm getting much traction with my concerns and I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. So I'll go ahead and make a motion. I move to recommend approval of proposed ordinance 19-08 without comment. A motion has been made to, to recommend approval without any further comments do i have a second for that motion i'll second it second has been made by joyce we are so if you're looking at the agenda we're talking about uh action number two the motion has been made to recommend approval to the board of, C of commissioners <clears throat> for this proposed ordinance. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. I believe I heard four ayes. And one abstention from Joe. Or did I hear? I was going to abstain too, but I don't want it to die, so I'll say yes. Okay. 
So we do have four eyes, one abstention. Abstention. If you abstained, it wouldn't die. It wouldn't. No. If we still had three votes. Yeah. So, so it's up to you. I, uh, I'll abstain. Okay. Yeah. Are you changing to abstention? Yes, sir. Okay, so the final tally was three, three, for, three votes aye, two abstentions. Okay. Okay, that concludes our new business. Nobody's here for a public, nobody for public comment. Um, Zach, when will we do our next meeting? Sure, so we will have a meeting on January 27th and the um, agenda so far is going to be approval of the 2019 annual report and also the reorganization. And that's it so far. Okay, so far. So far. Okay, very good. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion we adjourn. <clears throat> motion made by Joyce, is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Joe. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>